Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Nintendo Pipeline. In this second part of our March 16th conversation, we talked a little bit about Bowser's Fury. I hope you enjoy. Um, the actual main focus of this episode is about Bowser's Fury. Um, we kind of wanted to do a deep dive on that game and kind of, you know, see, talk a bit about what makes it tick and all that. So um, I guess I'll open it up to uh, Jared first. Uh, what were your general thoughts on Bowser's Fury in general, like just in general? Yeah, so I really enjoyed Bowser's Fury. I thought it was a good length. I think it would, if it was any longer, um, some of the frustrating bits that I'll go over later might have might have wore a little thin on me. But for the length it was, I thought it was a great mix of like three D World and Odyssey. Kind of like a, a very unique take on the 3D Mario, though taking a lot of elements from the older games. Uh, what about you, Barry? Um, 3D World and Bowser's Fury is such an interesting package to me. Um, having, I'm almost done with 3D World. I'm uh, playing it with my sister. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm close to being done, I think. Um, and I finished Bowser's Fury, uh, and it's, it's interesting that with seven years apart, right? Just about seven years. Yeah. Um, that we have something in Bowser's Fury that uses pretty much the same parts from 3D World to make something completely different. It's like a two-in-one Lego set, right? <laughs> like you, it's it's the same pieces, and it makes something completely different. Um, and I think that's super cool. Um, between the two, I think I prefer Bowser's Fury, um, even though, I mean, it's rough around the edges in some places. Um, it's clear that it's not a main uh like development focus i guess you could say i i think there are places where you can kind of tell i i saw a couple people complaining about the soundtrack being sort of like i think the soundtrack is great um yeah same here <laughs> you, you do it's... hear like a few songs maybe too much but like, yeah. yeah i didn't yeah. mind it at all yeah. that, that's exactly what i'm trying to say is that like there's there are places where it kind of like um, the 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 development polish sort of wears thin, and it's it's not like the quality; it's just like the polish that you see in a brand new sixty dollar game like Odyssey isn't quite there because it's something smaller, it's something different. Um, all that being said, this weird little formula they came up with um, really scratched an itch for me, and that's why I think it's probably one of my favorite Mario games. Um, yeah you know um i'm of I, I feel similarly um i really enjoyed bowser's fury um it was very good at giving you that itch of like okay i'll get like one more shine and then stop and then you're like well yeah. all right i guess i got i'll get another one and then you know it's like you have 20 shine 20 shines later <laughs> you know yeah. Uh, but yeah you know the length is is great i like that it's um short I, I think it lends itself well to replay um and you know i i also felt that it we'll probably get into this more specifically a little bit later but this the speed at which you get shines reminded me definitely of, of odyssey but also of mario 64 or if you know what you're doing or if you know in this case if you just kind of are, are fa a little bit fast about it you're, you're gonna get shines and kind of be moving forward constantly which i thought was was nice um yeah so i actually want to stop you for a second on oh, the mario yeah. 64 thing uh because i i had the same thoughts too that it had it reminded me a lot of 64 like each little island uh kind of reminded me of a of like the smaller stages in mario 64 and that once you complete a star you kind of have to leave the level like you do in mario 64 too like you're not kicked out but often the level doesn't change until you come back right so i, I thought that was a very interesting touch yeah i guess we can kind of use that as a actually a kind of segue into the, what i wanted to talk about a lot which was the game's sort of format um the structure of the game so the game is uh for you know intensive purposes is basically an open world i guess 
um, Mario game, I would say, you know, probably, you could probably compare it to, like, maybe, like, the Sand Kingdom or, or something like that in Odyssey if you want to be more technical about it. But it's basically an open area, and there's a bunch of little mini islands and stages and challenges all over the place. So I was kind of curious how you guys felt about how well that works for Bowser's Fury, um, if there were any other structural things in, in the game that you wanted to mention. Um, I guess uh, we can start with you, uh, Jared, on that one. Um, sure. I really like the structure for the most part. So you, you generally get a choice of like two to three uh, islands to go to and collect um, shines, um, which I thought worked really well for the most part, but there is a weird edge case you can hit, which makes it kind of frustrating. Also, if you hear in my background, it's now pouring rain, just for, so the audience oh. is aware. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was an area with three islands. I completed two of the islands. Like I, I kept going back and forth between the two, got all the shines there. And then to get all the shines in the third island, I had to, like, after you collect a shine, it makes you kind of go away for a bit, and usually you go to a different island, but with only having one island to go to, I kind of just had to, like, try to ride the dinosaur, like, the was it Plessy? Yeah, Plessy. I, I had to try to ride Plessy as far as I could away in the hopes that the island would reload and I can get the next shine. So that was, like, a weird, kind of felt like an oversight, but... I think besides that, I really liked the structure and the flexibility. Yeah, I think that's definitely worth noting. Um, what about you, Barry? I think that it was successful in bringing some of the appeal of an open world to Mario. Um, because to me, the appeal of open world games in general, besides things like immersion and a sense of cohesion, is you're going somewhere to do something and you can get distracted. Or you're going somewhere to do something and you can find something else. Um, and I had a couple of experiences like that. Um, I did pretty casually breeze through Bowser's Fury. And I think it's probably a better experience than like what Jared described of systematically completing it. Um, I'd almost say it's like better suited to like kids than gamers, <laughs> you know? Because uh, like a kid will just have fun going around and like the world gives the illusion of always changing and it kind of has mysteries you know really subtle like i mean i know i'm i'm a 20 year old man and when i played the game and i think it's the coliseum kept adding layers i thought i had like gotten lost and found a different taller coliseum <laughs> <laughs> i was like whoa and then i realized it was the same one i was like whoa <laughs> yeah that, that was a very clever uh stage yeah yeah the um the platforming in it is incredible, of course. Um, it's just it's just cool. Things like that, I think, have a lot of appeal to 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 younger gamers. <laughs> 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 um, just that a world will feel dynamic, and I think it does that better than Odyssey. Um, and I think that's something that suits the Mario emotional beats really well. Um, that you go around and things in the environment change a little bit. Uh, things are always changing with the Fury mechanic and the uncovering of new areas. Um, I think that's neat. Uh, a lot of time when I play Nintendo games, I'm kind of having the back of my mind um, with certain games, like what a kid would feel. Um, and Bowser's Fury is like, I, I think it would be awesome for like a young kid to play. Um, that's my recommendation, uh, I guess, for parents listening. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that's an interesting point. Um, I feel similarly in terms of the structure. Um, obviously, it is possible to, you know, run out of stuff to do except on one island. And in that case, you know, you kind of have to hop on Plessy and roundabout or whatever. Um, I didn't, at least my play style, I kind of hopped around anyway. So I was just kind of like doing whatever I was, I was kind of scatterbrained when it came to that. I also do think that the challenges like, you know, you can encounter the rabbits, you can encounter the Plessy gates. Um, and in the post game, you encounter the, the Plessy metals. Um, I think that kind of helps um, make that a little bit better because 
typically when you complete another shine, then like that's an immediate way that it'll reset, you know, an island that you had just been to. Um, and then the other thing, which, yeah, uh, Barry mentioned um, the Fury mode, or not mode, but the, the Fury condition, I guess. Um, obviously, that's a big thing for this game. Um, you know, it's... Conceptually, I like it. Um, Execution-wise, uh, it was kind of... Eh? Um, I like the intensity. But one, it lasts not very long. Uh, two, the most creative the game gets with the Fury mode in terms of like gameplay stuff is just break the Fury blocks, <laughs> and then you know like there there's not there's not really much there beyond that. Um, so I guess. I'd like to ask you guys about Fury Mode in particular, then um, I'll start with you, uh, Jared, just because uh, Barry already touched on it a little bit. Uh, yeah, so for a game called Mario Bowser's Fury, I would say this is m maybe the only part of the game I disliked. Uh, I thought the first few times the Fury, uh, Bowser's Fury attacks, uh, it was exciting and cool, and the first time I hit a Bowser block with it, I thought that was really neat. But as you go on, I feel like it just got kind of tiring. Like I'd be doing other shines and then I would just get interrupted by Bowser. What, the, one of the worst cases was if you're carrying the kittens, there's a, <laughs> uh, a post-game mission where you can carry the kittens across the islands to their mother. And if you're carrying a kitten while Bowser attacks... Yeah. Your kitten just turns into a demon kitten in your hand and cancels the mission out. Yeah, it just uh, immediately so just some, damages some you. Some frustrations like that, and it happens way too often in the post game. Yeah, I just wished I could yeah. like toggle oh it gosh. off. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, especially in the post game where like you're doing cleanup, and mm -hmm. part of that cleanup is probably fury blocks. You're like, okay, when's it gonna show up? Like, do I have to sit here and find something else to do? <laughs> um, am i you know do i get angry and just grab a bowser and me bow and scan it in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh that's a thing yeah yeah if you scan the a bowser amiibo it immediately it becomes fury him. time yeah oh wow yeah is there like an opposite of that uh, not, not <laughs> Go really. Away, Bowser. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they scan like a peach amiibo and it just goes away. Yeah, not that I know of. The other ones are mostly great. all just like, you get power up. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I never tried that. I have amiibos, but I never even considered it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of just wanted to play through the game without, you know, any of that. Which I guess uh, leads us into the next thing, which is, this game has a power up inventory, and it's not like... It's not like a normal Mario power-up inventory where it's like, oh, you know, world map, and then you get a power-up at the beginning of the stage, or, or like a reserve power-up, but like a straight-up, like, you have like, you know, a, a whole thing. Each each power-up in Bowser's Fury, you can have up to five of them, uh, and you can summon them at will, and when you, you know, when you collect a power-up, it doesn't get rid of your previous power-up, but it stores it. Um, in the inventory. And I thought this was very interesting because I'm someone who typically prefers 2D Mario, and one of the big reasons I like 2D Mario more is the variety of power-ups that you get that, you know, you can have a lot of different situations. Um, you know, like you can run through a stage and it's small Mario, or you can cheese a stage, or at least, you know, get through it easier with Raccoon Mario, or, you know... Um, you can take on bosses with a fire flower if you have them or, you know, there, there's a lot of different like opportunities and, and, and different things and the game changes a lot and you can kind of make your own sort of fun with power ups. But 3D Mario typically has like time limited power ups, mo mostly like 3D World is obviously a big exception here. Um, but, you know, like Mario 64 has the wind cap and it goes away after, you know, X amount of time and your only can be metal for a little bit. And even Galaxy is like, hey, you have a fire flower, but it's on a timer, you know, like, um, so it was fresh to me to have these power ups and not only have these power ups, but 
also have it so that I was very surprised that you didn't just lose the power up when you got a new one. Like being able to switch between them for different situations was was very interesting to me, even if it made, you know, you can make plenty of sections in the game extremely easy with like particularly the cat power up and the uh, Tanuki. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start with you, Barry. W what did you think about the whole power up inventory system they had going on in Bowser's Fury? I'll actually tell you what a good friend of mine thought of the power-up system. Um, he texted me and said, this is just like Mega Man. Um, and mm -hmm. I haven't played much Mega Man, um, but that was such an interesting comparison to me. Um, yeah, actually, that is really interesting. Yeah, that you... I mean, and you have a quantity, right? Right. With, with, with Mega Man um, and the uh, the like power to it. Yeah, um, he has like a you know you have a limited amount of mm -hmm. ammo or however you want to recall and you, it. You can collect a quantity of these power ups. Um, so I think it's kind of a uh, kind of a neat thing. Uh, I, I definitely used it a lot. I think it's a great, um, again, uh, great for like kids, you know, because you know it's easy to gather power-ups and you know as, as a kid or as someone who's bad at games like me um, <laughs> you know i mean i always tried to have like five cat suits on hand like okay you know let's do this yeah <laughs> you know? yeah um is it is it, it, it are we gonna start seeing uh actually true 100 percent of bowser's fury is getting all the shines and also maxing out your your power up inventory? oh my gosh <laughs> yeah but yeah, that's actually a good point about Mega Man. You can switch between your weapons for any situation, and that allows for, you know, you can be that person who goes through and tries to do it buster only. Um, or you can be that guy who's like, Metal Man, in the refight, uh, I'll throw you, I'll throw a Metal Blade at you and you'll die in one hit. <laughs> um, would, do you think, do you think it's, do you think it's too easy? Do you think that's fine? Do you think like? I don't think it's too easy. Yeah. Personally, I don't think it's too easy. Um, I, I understand why some people might feel that way. Um, it couples well with the open world design. I feel um, to collect power ups on your adventure and be able to use them elsewhere, um, and it also opens new opportunities. I feel for and they didn't pursue it too much, but there's a great opportunity to have multiple power-up puzzles or secrets or collectibles um things that kind of require both and switching between them so in the future if a system like this is implemented um you could get pretty ambitious with it from a design perspective yeah i, I, I really liked the new power-up system i thought it was one of the smartest uh features in the game um sometimes there was a problem in um 3d world for me where I would get halfway through a level and there would be a green star that would require a cat suit and I didn't have one on me so I would have to kind of play the level again so with this just having that power up in a block or in your inventory uh, that really eliminated that problem and I thought it was a really yeah. smart solution I, I don't want to like take up too much time with this because the focus should be the new stuff but playing it again as an adult um, 3D World does not respect your time, like, at all. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's like, you got to play this one if you want everything with Peach. And the only way you need Peach for it is because there's a button with a crown on it. Yeah, that yeah. so silly. <laughs> it's not integrated. Like, you don't need the speed or you don't need the floating or the abilities. You just need to be this character or the button won't, you know? Yeah. Uh, and like you said with the... Sometimes you're just going to need a cat suit. We don't have any here. Go get one. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I mean, it, it's a meaty game. I think 3D World, like, is kind of huge, honestly. Yeah. And that contributes to it. Um, but, man, does it make me feel disrespected, you know? <laughs> I, I spend $60 on you <laughs> and your little brother, and you treat me this way. How could you? you? <laughs> <laughs> How could you betray me like this? You know, yeah, and, and on that note, um, I've seen a variety of thoughts on this. Um, so uh, 
we'll we'll start with you, Barry, on this one since it's kind of tying into this. But um, the shine objectives in the game. So there are you know the ones that are like, oh, okay, beat the level, and that's fine. Uh, but then there's you know in terms of the variety of types, right? So there's a lot of ones that are blue coins. There are a lot of ones that are fury blocks. There are a lot of ones that are oh, you know, smash the switch and a thing pops up. Um, I kind of wanted to ask you guys about uh, how you felt about the variety of objectives, if they felt, you know, like there were too few permutations or or if it worked out, um, if they were too, some of them were too fast, uh, that kind of thing. So I guess, uh, well, yeah, we'll start with you, Barry, on that one. So personally, I think that the Bowser's Fury objectives were awesome, okay? And I'm a big fan of Mario Odyssey, but... Um... The Bowser's Fury objectives are a huge step up for the most part um, because they kind of fit into like a format and formats in game structure are very satisfying. You know, you say that they're repetitive and well, not you specifically, but pe people say that they're right. repetitive. Um, but I, I feel like it's more like you go to different places to do similar things. And that feels good. Like every area or most areas have like, uh, you know, peace switch or, you know, blue coin area or, you know, or blue coin challenge, I guess. Um, most areas have a, like a peace switch with a, a fight, like a little arena appears magics in from the ether and you fight some <laughs> enemies. Um, and I don't know. I think that sort of thing is really satisfying because people talk about there being too many objectives in Odyssey and I don't think that's really the whole problem from a psychological standpoint. Um, Odyssey kind of leaves you feeling directionless sometimes. And I'm a big fan of it. So it it almost feels bad to be entertaining an argument. I have spent a, on and off been fighting for years now. Um, but with Odyssey, you find yourself um, – kind of going around doing random things you know odyssey's one of its core themes is you know being on this journey um with a lot of unexpected things and you kind of um or, or rather the moons sort of play into that uh because between odyssey worlds there are a few things that i would say are shared and you guys might disagree. It's been a while since I played Mario Odyssey, and I'm sure there are exceptions, uh, some pretty notable ones. But those always feel like exceptions. They, they feel that way. In general, with Odyssey, you're going to a world, and you're going to do all the little tasks that are in that world. And for each world, it's different. Some people might think that's good. I think it contributes to the general sentiment that Odyssey has, and I'm using air quotes here, too many objectives, too many collectibles. Because... It's not about the quantity. It's about how, how the the relationship between the game and the player, the way that these worlds and these objectives present themselves. Right. And in Odyssey, it's very deliberately presenting itself as chaos. And <laughs> ironically, in the open world Bowser's Fury, it's portraying itself to the player as structure. These are areas, um, and they have similar tasks for you to do. So, um, so you're kind of that. you're kind of saying like, okay, so like, main island, main island is always going to have you know, finish the level. It's going to have a blue coin you know, objective. It's going to yeah. have a key objective. Yada yada yada. Fury Luigi, mm -hmm. whatever. And that's sort of, I I don't know if comforting is the right word, but yeah, yeah. Bowser's Fury really needed that too. It's it's a smart choice because, you know, if if Bowser's Fury were structured the way odyssey also air quotes is structured it would be pretty much unplayable can you imagine if it was just a giant odyssey map with things in random places very insidiously bowser's fury is a traditionally structured game in a very novel new world format um and they've threaded that needle very well i feel um yeah and i think that the repetition makes Bowser's Fury the streamlined, accessible, but fun experience that it is. I'm curious, uh, Jared, what you think of some of what Barry said, especially the parts in relating to uh, how the game's objectives feel 
compared to Odyssey? Um, yeah, so I, I, I think they're kind of hard to compare because um, Odyssey was trying to be something a lot, a lot, a lot bigger. And I think their intention with Odyssey was for you to not get all of the moons. Like there's over 800 moons. I don't think the developers really intended for most players to get them. I think what I like about in in this one, Bowser's Fury, is there's those hundred moons. There, it's it was an amount that I wanted to get everything. I, it didn't feel like an insurmountable challenge. None of the tasks were like extremely annoying that I was like frustrated to do them. Like uh, while we're on like Odyssey, like there was those like uh, like do a hundred jump ropes or. Right. Trace a circle, and some of those I just did not like. There were <laughs> trace a circle. There, <laughs> there are trace a circle missions yeah, in Odyssey. The, Jesus. There were none in this that I disliked as much as those, but I, I will say I didn't like the cat ones. Yes. The, the kitten oh, ones. Oh, those were, are those are miserable. Those were bad. Absolutely. Yeah. And I thought the Luigi ones were boring, where you just like chase Luigi. a shadow Luigi. Oh, yeah. It was just yeah, dull. They're super easy. Yeah, yeah. They just felt like those felt like filler. Um, but I, I liked all the other ones. I liked the blue coins. I liked the keys. I thought the key added like a interesting challenge where you have to you progress through the level normally, grab a key, and then you have to walk back yeah. walk back with the key using no power ups or uh all right. No power ups and no diving. Yeah. No that, that's really interesting. I think Yeah, yeah. and I, I agree with um y- you make a great point about Bowser's Fury being designed to be completed. Um, yeah. And Odyssey, I agree, is not. Um, I love Odyssey, but I I only got all the moons in um, New Donk City, and I used an exploit for, like, the jump rope. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> so, hard. I, I did it. I did it. I completed the jump oh, rope challenge. congratulations. But it was, yeah, that's... it was not worth the time I spent on it. No. Man, I got, like, <laughs> yeah. I had, like, an attempt on the jump rope. It was like the first attempt I made on it like that day and I got 97 and I was so oh pissed. Oh. I was so mad. I would turn off oh. the game. Yeah, I was like, damn. But yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I didn't, I felt that in terms of the objectives that were the weakest, definitely the Fury Blocks because that was yeah. just you using yourself as a, as a human freaking <laughs> blast shield for his fire and you kind of sat around and waited. Although... I do find them interesting just in the sense of uh, routing out the game. That's more of a, you know, if you're speedrunning it or if you're replaying it and you're trying to be more efficient, you can kind of route, you know, when Bowser gets furious to to kind of get some shines. Um, the other ones that I thought were weak or weaker were the key ones, actually. Um, mostly because a lot of them were like, there is a key at the end of the level. And now you bring it back to the beginning and, you know, there weren't many level situations or structures that made that particularly interesting. Some of it was just like, I mean, granted, you don't have to do this, but like, I'm just going to Tanuki fucking float back to, you know, the start and jump <laughs> off the top and, and return. Or, you know, I, I think it, w- it would have been more interesting if maybe like, there, there were a few stages where the keys were not at the end of the level. Um, they were in, like, kind of weird spots, and I thought that was slightly more interesting. Like, I know one of the earlier ones, I want to say it's the one with all the, like, I think it's Bounce Bounce Isle. There is, with all the springboards, they put mm-hmm. the key, like, on the top of, like, a wall. Um, and, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not, like, extremely hard to find or anything, but, like, you can you can con- conceivably miss it. Um so yeah i guess maybe if those were less like the keys always at the end or you know like maybe the 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 cage didn't have to be at the beginning um but yeah i do also agree on the fury luigi ones that are like they're kind of just they feel like shadow mario but like somehow worse than shadow Mm -hmm. mario um (laughs) And I also find it really funny that you can sick J- Bowser Jr. on on him very easily. Um, I did like the cat like coin ones. Uh, we haven't mentioned those yet. Uh, the cat shards or whatever. Oh it is. yeah, yeah. They were like they were like the silver stars from um, 
Mario yeah. 64 DS. Yeah, or even even kind of like the red coins in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, where, yeah, like it's there, you kind of have to look around a little bit. I mean, some of them were really dumb. Um, I know there's yeah, a few I, stages. I had to Google two of them. Yeah, I, I didn't end up having to Google them, but like there were a couple of stages where I was like, all right, where is this stupid thing? And it's like, oh, it's <laughs> it's underneath but only it's underneath on a thing on the side but only on one side and it's like in the middle of this long stretch of nothing like all right you know like <laughs> and i i don't i i think it's good to have some explore well i think it isn't bad to have some exploration in there but i think some i don't think that it should necessarily be like a cakewalk but some of the pos- placements were kind of weird mm-hmm. um but for the most part you know they're pretty solid and i actually yeah. really liked the plessy gate um the bonus areas yeah. and the medals those are fun. yeah like those yeah. were ones that made sense to have multiple of it um, feels good to ride plessy i guess we haven't really talked about yeah that oh, yeah it's so good it's like one of the best parts of the game yeah. and we haven't discussed it at yeah all. she's fast she got a yeah. big speed yeah. boost like she's on some something i don't know what but getting around the islands feels fun it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a wind waker type slog yeah and she also you know i don't know about you but there are several times that i had just fun with plessy like deforesting an entire island of trees (laughs) yes 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 (laughs) um and you know that does play into the final boss as well which we probably should cover the boss encounters um where you know spoilers i uh, I mean yeah but you know it came out a month ago. Spoiler, yeah, you fight if, Bowser. If you're, yeah. Well, you Skip fight, forward to the end yeah. if you don't want to hear any spoilers. But um, with the, the final encounter is a unique encounter, and you need to use Plessy to, you know, approach Bowser. And, and the way that it works is um, if you take damage from, you know, him, like, throwing out his weird blocks or whatever, or, or his flames, um, it... it I not only slows you down, but it, it, it the game will not allow you to hit Bowser, basically. Um, so you need to not only be fast and be following Bowser, but you also need to not take damage. And I mean, you have plenty of power-ups that you can tank damage with, but the battle will go on longer because the game is just like, nah, you suck. <laughs> Bowser's leaving, you know, to, to, this next, to this next part. So I thought that was interesting that it used Plessy's uh, dive and her, like, speed jump. Um that she has in in this game. What yeah. about the uh, the that and the uh, the regular boss encounters for you guys? I guess we'll we'll start with uh, Jared. Um. Yeah. So I'll say I, I liked that final encounter. I thought the Plessy boss was actually the most interesting. I got yeah. um. I got sort of bored of the other boss, the Bowser uh, boss. You kind of do the the same thing like three times, which. Uh, it's okay in like a Mario 64 when those three times are like hours apart but when you're yeah. fighting the same boss within like three hours it just it got kind of dull for me though it's a cool spectacle the first time yeah and I'd like to point out too it wasn't just three times it's five times oh, it's that five. You, yeah yeah it, it was too uh, much <laughs> yeah like because there's the point where Bowser's like all right well you got my health bar down to half I, I'm still defeated, <laughs> uh, so you have to come back. And the only thing they really did was, and it's not too dissimilar from Mario 64 in this sense, but each battle iteration added a new attack or gimmick. Um, but yeah, I, I would agree that they got a bit, a bit boring and, and played out by the end. I wish that maybe they they had a little bit more difference, or maybe were a little less frequent, or. You know, I don't know. Um, what about you, Barry? Um, you know, I thought that with with the boss, it's it's just kind of. I don't know if it's because I'm I'm pretty bad in general at games, but I I don't really have too much of an opinion on it. I think that the loop for the Nain uh, Fury encounters makes itself apparent pretty quickly if you realize you can pick up the blocks yes um you know because you, you just pick up blocks and throw it at them and it's really easy and it's kind of satisfying but it's it's not yeah really, you know because it's so simple um and then the final boss i think is incredibly irritating <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm curious. personally I'm curious. i don't i don't know yeah i uh 
I don't know. I always felt like I was doing a bad job of driving Plessy or, or riding Plessy. Um, and I, I don't know what it was, but I just could not send this dinosaur in a straight line. <laughs> um, I, I could not. There were a couple times where I missed like the power-up bubbles. Mm, there was a time right. that I missed hitting him, you know, um, or hitting the ball that he has taken the... I don't know. It's yeah, been, the, it's been a month. The I, thing with the yeah, the with thing. things. Yeah, the thing with the things. Yeah, that it was a month ago. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, we, it's a Mario game. <laughs> the lucky Some, bell. He took thing. something. Yeah. and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that the boss fights were pretty annoying. I think I agree with Jared that the fury is probably like, I mean, it's an important and it's it's an important structurally. You know, it frames the game really well. Um, and I think it's interesting, and it's novel, and it works for something small like this for that reason, that it's novel. Um, it's something you can put on the front of the box. It's like, ooh, you know. Uh, yeah, Bowser's but... really mad, and now there's this cool art of, like, <laughs> yeah, crazy-ass-looking yeah, Bowser. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in general, I think that Fury wasn't too compelling in practice. I think that one of the most insecure design decisions they made was the fury blocks um i know you guys touched on it before but um to me that conveys that they were concerned about the loose coupling between the gameplay of the main game and the fury uh mode or the fury fury mode they yeah call it, right yeah it's, i mean that's uh, basically what it is sure um and they wanted to couple those in some way so they made it so you have to find these blocks um and I don't think it was worth it. I didn't feel like they were connected. I think it instead highlighted a disconnect. If, if they weren't there, it, that disconnect would have been fine if they had owned it. But they, I, I feel like they tried to um, cover up or mitigate this distinction between the two modes. And I think it's really lame. What would have saved it, in my opinion, is if, if the game did a really good job with um, collateral damage processing with the mm. fury blocks right yeah so like if if when bowser's fury happens and he's just shooting at you and it's like a whole thing um if it were constantly keeping track of which ones he happens to hit then it would be and if they were more visually distinct when they're gone like there's like a crater or something then it would be another thing where it's um kind of a mystery kind of a dynamic world where it's like you see this block that you can't hit only bowser can hit and you're like oh shit that's crazy dog uh and then you come back later and you're like oh this is a crater now because he showed up a bunch of times and he just shot randomly because he was pissed right um and i think that would have been it would have added further to the um the sense of wonderment that comes from a world that changes um even if sometimes the seams are apparent um like jared was saying about having to go away from an island and come back to it um yeah. I think that would have been cool. That would have been a better thing. But is it technically possible? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, but fairy blocks are bad. I don't think that's a controversial opinion. I don't think we have to defend that too much. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone is particularly wild about fairy blocks. No one is excited about fairy blocks. <laughs> yeah. I felt like the game was just... Dread. Yeah, I feel like the game was just... Was kind of too afraid to lean into the fairy elements a lot. Because yeah. it's really easy to end Fury, right? You just get a shine. Um, and then, you know, there's the Fury blocks, which you can basically use as that shine to end Fury mode. It would have been so much more interesting to me if, you know, Bowser becomes furious and then he stays furious for a certain amount of time and there's not a way to stop it. Like, you know, you can time it, obviously, so that, you know, you get a shine right as he's turning angry and then that cancels it out. But, like... You know, the the game is much more chaotic and kind of wild when he is out there causing issues. And I, I feel like it should have leaned into that more. Um, then again, there are definitely stages in that game that were not really built particularly well for dealing with Bowser when he's enraged. Um, ones where it's like very difficult to find cover or, you know, so I guess that's sort of a thing, too. Um in regards to the bosses, yeah, 
they were repetitive. It was silly just kind of throwing the blocks at him. I didn't even notice you could throw the blocks at him for a while. Like, I didn't know until the last battle. Yeah. What? Yeah, like I didn't. How did you guys I, get through it? I, I just waited Holy for him shit. to ground pound, basically. Yeah, oh, ground yeah. pound or you guys are good at games. His, um, I'm yeah, not good at games, yeah. right? Like, I was just like, <laughs> grab a block immediately because I was like, this is bullshit. There's no way this is the only way. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, even. Man, I breezed through that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have much trouble with them, but like. You know, I, I had the idea of, you know, when he spins on his side, you can probably smack him and knock him over, yep. but I always just, you know, screwed it up because I'm bad. But um, and then, so then, uh, you know, as an, an addendum to this, um, there is the 100% bosses, which are different, um, slightly. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to I was, I was gonna say, I are, are they the difference. different? So I, I'll, I'll explain the differences I, I don't doubt it, but... real quick. Um, so with the 100%, um, Bowser, like, Fury boss, um, the, the main gimmick for that one isn't anything new that he does outside of his health being a lot more, but that the cat, well, the, the lucky, the Gigabells, they don't respawn. Um, so when you get a Gigabell, like, to start the battle, that Gigabell's gone forever, and then if you run into any of the other two, they're gone forever. The, the other fights, they actually, like, re regenerate after a while. Um, so that was pretty much like the ultimate, like actual, like, excuse me, quote unquote, tough <laughs> version of that battle. And then the, I think the more noticeable one was the hundred percent version of the plessy part. Um, because one, he, his attacks are much crazier and two, um, the game is much less forgiving in terms of, you know, if you if you take some damage eventually getting to hit him the game is just like nah <laughs> He'll, he just hops away and he then shoots like 30,000 blocks at you and you just kind of have to figure out how you're gonna dodge through him so that one took me forever um the second 100 percent boss um so i don't know what you guys felt about about those if they were different I, enough, if you even noticed. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't uh, notice the okay. difference except for the Plessy part. I noticed there were more, like, uh, landmines or whatever they were, water mines. Yeah, yeah, it seemed vaguely harder, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm, like, kind of, you know, what's the most polite way to put it? Dumb? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I just didn't. Yeah. I don't know. By that point, I was just I I was trying to be dumb. Yeah, I was I was pretty dumb with it by that point. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess on that note, um, are there any other thoughts about the game that we didn't really talk about that you guys? Uh, I like share? it. Yeah. I think it's neat. I like it too. Yeah. Do you also think it's neat? <laughs> um. Oh. I do. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Good. Phew. Um, okay. One thing I wanted to briefly touch on. Um. The post game is a little weird, um, not weird. Okay, so like the Plessy medals get added, the Toad Brigade stuff gets added. Um, I felt like it, and and the Lucky Island or whatever yeah, that I don't that like happens. Getting mini games. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know. I I feel like it would have been cool if maybe like there was an island or two that opened up after uh, main game. The other thing that I find that I found really kind of weird is so like Bowser, right? So he's mad and he's, there's this goop everywhere and this kingdom that he's in is just like, you know, completely screwed right now. And then even when you 100% the game, there's still goop everywhere and the lake is still completely fucked yeah. up. Like, yeah, this they, happened no, in yeah. Um, Breath of the Wild too, and I wished they call that ludo narrative dissonance. Yeah, I believe. I, I yeah. wish there was a clean version of the world, just like the same I did in Breath of the Wild. Like, I wanted yeah, to see it I, cleaned up, Hyrule. Yeah, I hate Zelda's ending thing where it's like you finish the game, go back to when you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the thing with with Bowser's Fury is that you don't go back to when you didn't because when you beat him the first time at fifty shines. You know, you save him or whatever, and then you go back and Bowser Jr. is like, well, that didn't work. So, you know, <laughs> things are still fucked up. But then 100%, you know, he should be fine. And, you know, once you do have 100%, he no longer gets furious. But, like, that giant goop crater is still there. That, like, part over the waterfall is just still covered with trash. 
Like, this whole, like, kingdom is still completely fucked, <laughs> even after yeah. you've, you know, supposedly fixed everything. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, unless anybody else has anything on Bowser's Fury, I, I think that's, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good on that. Um, yeah, I, I think I definitely got all my thoughts across. Yeah.